So if you can just open your Bibles, Mark, you here this morning, uh, just again to break through City, City Church, and it's the 1st of November, and we're so glad just to be in person meeting here. So welcome to those who are going to watch online as well. Um, I want us just to, I'm going to speak this morning about something that I really believe is really crucial, um, and just what God is speaking to us about now. So, um, I want us just to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter um, 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to start looking uh, from verse 3 to 5, and a couple of other scriptures in that, and um, let's just see what the Lord wants to do in that, like I said, it's just a, such a sweet presence of God in this place, and a freshness of the Spirit right now, so um, I'm just enjoying it actually, I'm just, while I'm preaching, I'm enjoying His presence here, so... We're supposed to be refreshed, eh? We're supposed to be refreshed daily. So, um, I want to speak to you about something, if I can give this a title, even just a message. I want to speak about trust. Trust. Um, earlier this week, we had a storm that came through our city. And there's some interesting stories that we can share about what actually happened. Some of you heard some of the things that happened at us as well. Um, and, uh, um, and, when a storm came through the week and that, and it was a wind storm, um, I saw so many, who you saw so many branches in the, in the roads, and trees that had come down, and branches, and like, even, you know, dead branches, and even branches with leaves, and, you know, like, fresh leaves. And I just felt the Lord saying to me, and when I saw it in this week, He started to speak to me about this, and it also has to do with this word, that at the moment, I believe in the body of Christ, what God is doing is um, there's been wounds of adversity, but also wounds uh, where the enemy is sent, but there's also wounds of what God has sent to actually clear and open up things. There's dead branches that God is actually removing from our lives. There's, there's things that have been dead that have given a form, but there's been no life in it that God is removing. But there's also different leaves um, there was leaves on branches that are green. And God said, but I'm also pruning. So, no matter what the enemy tries to do, um, God is still busy. But I felt there's the season we gain into, we're going to start to see a lot of new things. And I, there's a lot of removal that's taking place. And God is also doing that in the body of Christ. Because um, Jesus is coming for a bride. And that, not all that is in the church is part of the bride. Right? So, um, but God is busy right now and He's busy dealing with the church on earth because God says, I'm going to shake heaven and earth. And you see how the world is shaking. So, what about the, the actual church is being shaken? I mean, there's so many people that have been shaken up and, um, you know, there's, I said to you the first two months, I think was it was in America, 30 to 35,000 churches closed permanently. God is shaking things. But He's about to reveal His beauty and His glory in a new, fresh way on earth. I really believe that. I believe we can see the, the, this latter rain and this, the glory, which is there's a culmination of, of the glory of God that we've just seen an amazing way through the church. That's going to be revealed in our cities, in our nations, isn't it? All right? So, um, just get ready for that. But he starts with you and me. He's looking for a people that say, yes, here I am. All right. So, yeah, he's uh, just part of this. That's what I felt. I'm just coming to this with this time that we're gaining. One of the things that I've seen in the body of Christ is the thing about trust. There's so many things that we've been shaken with. Is about, my question is, what are you actually trusting? Who, who of you have been challenged concerning trusting God in this last six months with COVID? Everyone has been challenged with trust. Because whatever you trust in can either be a stronghold from the enemy or from God. That's why there's so many things even in the natural, just, you know, these storms that have come through, it's been removed. Do you know when this fire took place about a month ago, yeah, just next to our building, the second one in a year? Right, the whole farm was burnt down last year. The buildings, everything, the fire came in and it stopped. Literally stopped. 
um, the same thing we had a month ago. But the interesting thing, when some of the people at the top of my come here and they told me, they said, uh, they said while they actually were running at the top and they wanted to also help put out fires, and they said, but we saw the snakes like just coming past us. I want to tell you something, the fire is exposing the serpents, it's exposing the lies, it's exposing the enemy. Let me tell you something, even in our nation. Have you seen the fires in America? Have you seen the fires in South Africa? Because there's fire, there's revival coming to these nations, I'm telling you. America is very key. South Africa is very key. You'll see Trump will be re-elected. I've said that live before. You need people, doesn't matter. I'm telling you, God wants to finish what He's called the nations for. Um, he's looking for a glorious church. So anyway, you may not get distracted there. So there's a stronghold. So whatever you trust in, uh, is either in God or in circumstances. All right. So uh, trust is central to a relationship that we have with God. Trust is central. So without faith, the Bible says it is impossible to please God. Isn't that so? All right. So why? Um, because God is the most trustworthy person that there is and will ever be. He's the most trustworthy of any person or anyone that is and is to come. He is trustworthy. So, the thing is, you and I are indebted to Him to actually reflect that trust and that faithfulness that He has for us. God wants us to reflect that. Uh, in Mark chapter 10, sorry, you must just say there's a bit of feedback on this one speaker here. Just check it out. In the sound. Um, Mark chapter 10, you know the story I spoke, and I'll, I'll, I'll touch on some of these things I've touched previously. But Mark chapter 10 says, speaks about the following it says about the rich young man. Remember, Jesus says, you know, he says, but I've obeyed all these commandments. And Jesus says, he says, that's fine. Sounds good. He says, but everything you have, go and say it. But you're saying such a hard thing. You see, the reason what Jesus was actually speaking about and why I referred to him, um, because he's, you know, where this rich young man says that this is such a very hard thing. The big thing here was that the rich young man was trusting in riches to enter the kingdom. What was the issue he had was trust. Let me say this again. There's nothing wrong with finances and money. But the love of money is the root of all evil. I believe God has laid up, the Bible says, He's laid up the, the wealth of the wicked for the righteous. I believe the times we're living, we're going to start to see righteous men and women that God is going to release resources in. Not Christian men and women, kingdom minded men and women. It's a big difference. But God is wanting to test what we place our trust in. Alright? We know that um, uh, it's like the thing of we say, how much money is too much money? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about that? How much money is too much money? You never. You've never thought about that. How much money is too much money? Right? Well, the thing is, how much money is too much money is that whatever amount that will replace your trust is too much money. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with your trust. Are you with me? There's Mary, Martha and Lazarus. Jesus didn't say go and sell everything. They were very wealthy by the way. Jesus didn't say go and sell all this and that. Because what they trusted and put their hearts and trust had nothing to do with money. But the rich young man, that was what he trusted in. What are you trusting? What's keeping you going at the moment? Is it the economy? Is it the future of South Africa? Is it the future of whatever nation you're from or listening to right now? What have you put your trust in? 
Jesus always deals with the heart because the heart is where your trust comes from. Alright? So your heart is always where your trust comes from. And just remember this faith does not come from your mind. Because what is God doing? He looks for those who believe. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. In uh, Proverbs, you can have a look at it, I'll just read it to you. Proverbs uh, chapter 21, verse 22. Uh, it's quite an interesting scripture. It says, I'll repeat it three times here. A wise man scales the city and pulls down strongholds in which they trust. All right? It says, a wise man scales the city and pulls down strongholds in which they trust. I repeat again. A wise man scales the city and pulls down strongholds in which they trust. Okay? So some people um, take hold of what they trust in, which is actually not God. I trust in my bank balance, I trust in sport, I trust in the economy, I trust in something else. And you know, even there's blessings maybe that come in our lives. Now I trust in the blessing. That's, I've said this before. I, I've, you know, it's only maybe me that's thought of this. But I thought, you know, there's a few people that have a few billion dollars. Individuals. And I thought, but if they would be so nice as just to maybe give like one million dollars to each person on earth is around going to close to eight billion people now on earth. These guys have 60, 70, 80 billion US each individually, much more. But even if you gave a million dollars to each individual, they would have lost it within a few days. Anyway. Or they would have put their trust in that. Have you, have, do you know that even in the lotto, where people put a lotto and stuff like this to win stuff, do you know that you, they, this is just research have done. Within, I can't remember exact, I'm under, I'm under correction, within a f literally a few years. They've lost everything. I never seen five years already. They've lost everything. Alright? So God will never bless you. Listen to me. God will never bless you and me. That will cause you and me to stumble. Does it mean He doesn't want to bless us? Of course He does. But what can you handle? Because what you can handle is many times what you can trust. Do you trust Him or what you have? And yet Jesus didn't even have a pillow to put His head on. The Bible says. Did He trust in His Father totally? He says, Father, I commend my spirit to you. I give you there I am. There I am. I surrender all. So, when it speaks about a stronghold here, what is a stronghold? We've touched on this before, but I'll just repeat this. You see, a stronghold um, that's referred to here is refers to actually in the medieval times. Remember, a stronghold, a festung, as you would say in German, is a, and we actually saw them, that's why I'm just saying that, just to impress some of you. No, just kidding. But some of the festungs, actually it's these blocks of stone. You don't pack like a castle on one another like that. These festers, the like, did I say? These, these strongholds. And, um, but the enemy would hide behind it to protect themselves and also they would come out from behind the stronghold to an, a, to, to, to an attack. That is what a stronghold is. Okay? These are these strongholds. And uh, the thing is, it, it's, it's a hiding place also, which is in a person, which is created through wrong thought patterns. That's what 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 5, you'll see, speaks about strongholds. A stronghold is what you and I have in our thinking. So many times we are busy, you know, uh, not that I have any respect for the devil, but we're chasing the devil around instead of changing our thinking. 
Because the strongholds that the enemy has influenced through us is our thought patterns. That is what 2 Corinthians 10 is referring to. These strongholds, it is wrong belief systems. Because our wrong belief systems empower lies. It empowers the influence from this demonic realm influencing us, which causes us to function in certain ways. So our belief system is what we believe is what we behave. So if I think in a way, I behave in a certain way because that's what I believe. So it's like this thing is um, when you're in a situation, give an example, there's a, a stressful situation, something happens, what do you do? You know, there's normally these three things. You either fight. I grew up like that. With two older brothers. <laughs> Um, you, sit, you know, when fear comes, you fight. So I grew up like, oh, just, let's just do this. Or you flee, you run, or you freeze. And some people do that. In stressful situations, how do you respond? Do you understand? So a lot also has to do with how um, um, I've processed and I think. As a man thinketh in himself so easy. Alright? So... Uh, the, these strongholds are formed in my thinking. So, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. Let me just read that. Um, let me read. Uh, let's just read here from verse 3. 2, 2 Corinthians 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Alright, so thinking incorrectly not only empowers the enemy, but what it does is it also gives them the safe place to hide in our patterns of thought. Remember, when you and I face a certain situation, I always refer to this, is that like a stink bug, you can see the insect there, it doesn't stink. Put pressure on it. So when we come under pressure, what is inside comes out. And that has a lot to do with our thought patterns. Because guys, we've all come from different backgrounds. We've all had negative and positive influences in our lives. And that's why, yet for the grace of God, they go up. So let's not point the finger. Let's, because you and I don't know your battles. I don't know all the things you've gone through. The same as my life. But what you and I do have, because we know Jesus now, we have the power to choose what is right. So sometimes people say, yeah, but you know, the possessed person is demons. Listen to me, I want to just tell you one thing here now, that just to correct any theology that is, might be inconsistent with the word is this. When Jesus came across from the Sea of Galilee and the possessed guy was running without clothes there amongst the graveyards and stealing these people's cats and dogs for lunch and takeaways, um, he, and he comes and he runs to Jesus and he falls at the knees of Jesus and he starts to worship Jesus. This, this is a guy possessed by thousands of demons. He was able to choose to worship Jesus. And then Jesus set him free. It wasn't the devil. He, he, the, de the devil said, that's not our time. And he came and he bowed to worship Jesus. I want to tell you something. There's no power or force from hell or anywhere that can prevent you or anyone from worshiping Jesus. Okay? You can't compare God and the devil. The devil is nothing. He's a created being. You understand? God is not a created being. He is eternal. Don't try to compare the devil with God. He, the devil's defeated. He's a loser. He was defeated 2,000 years ago on the cross. We received the authority back in Jesus Christ. Let me continue before I get excited. Alright. So, the thing is this. In our thought patterns, you know, the enemy hides and in our thinking and it influences our behavior when we're in certain situations. So we can be Christians, but we can have the devil influence in our lives because our, our broken thought patterns, our broken emotions.
Yet God says, remember I preached this earlier this year, I think last year, that in Isaiah he says, those who are broken, God will use the broken people who've been restored to actually restore rebuild cities. That's why, hey, there's hope for you and me. Doesn't matter how broken your life was, God says, I'm going to restore you, rebuild you, and you will rebuild these cities. Woo! Nothing is impossible. All things are now possible through Jesus Christ, okay? So, um, the, what happens in strongholds, the demonic hides behind these thought patterns in our soul, alright? And when our trust is anchored in something else but God. So, these, 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 the demonic influences hide behind these thought patterns, they hide behind. And when I come to a certain situation, what am I trusting in? I'm trusting in this what's shaking. And the devil has an influence in my life. It's like, well, you know, I'm a loser. No one likes me. I'm going to eat some worms. I'm telling you, hey, you've never felt rejected. We've all felt rejected. But you know, Jesus was always re the most rejected of anyone on this earth. And he ever lived. Because the Father even rejected him. He took it upon him. He says, here I am. I'll take this on me. You see, the enemy forms these strongholds when, uh, when, when I find myself thinking about a problem uh, without a redemptive solution. So, just think about this. You might be in your life, whatever situation you're facing now, your future, your finances, your work situation, your business, your family relationships, your emotional state... The enemy gets it right to keep you in that place, the stronghold. He has his influence if you don't find a redemptive purpose. God has a redemptive purpose. He always has an answer for your impossibility. God has put you and me on earth and it's an impossible situation, guys. And if you realize the battle we're born in on this earth, because there's a bunch of devils running around here and stuff and, you know, I don't entertain them, I chase them away. But the thing is this, is we are in a battle, we're born in a battle. And God says, I want you to do this and this and this. It's absolutely impossible. And that's the thing. He, 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 everything, this side of eternity is impossible. But he says, now all things are possible. Because you know Jesus, nothing is impossible anymore. It is now possible. Whether it's the sick, whether it's the dead, whether it's whatever. These things are now possible that were impossible. But what you believe about it will influence the result, if you don't have a redemptive purpose for your financial thing or hope in that, then you will be in agreement with the lie. And you will eat from the fruit of what you believe. So whatever your situation might be, God has a redemptive purpose. But you and I need to start believing that. I mean, you know, and there's now also, there's, there's things we've touched on a bit as well, not giving you all detail, but we've had major breakthroughs, which we were trusting God for years. If I tell you about it, some of you will become depressed, so I won't tell you. <laughs> but nothing is impossible. And I want to tell you something. When you start believing and trusting God in that field, you take hold of the authority you have. You can walk with that authority. Alright, so... God wants to give you a redemptive, and that's in your thinking. needs like, I, I, this is impossible. I don't know how we can do this. And, and, and to have this redemptive, God has a plan here. God's going to do something. I don't know what. But guys, we don't always have to know what. We have to believe and trust Him that He has an answer. Guys, we've been through, what, six, seven months of this lockdown. Absolute bull, put it in lightly. What the world is imposed in the nations of this earth. But there's a beauty coming from this that God's going to turn around. And people being abused and misused by governments and politics and whatever in the name of what? Flu. Let me not go there because I'll be sidetracked. But despite these things, 
Hope is arising in the nations of this earth because people, I've said before in this lockdown, do you know how many people are coming to know Jesus in this time? Do you know how many people that we heard even in the UK with this lockdown? They spoke in the early times, I think one in four people were watching Christian, or two in four people were watching Christian broadcast stuff in the UK. People are looking for God because the Bible says Jesus is the desire of the nations. There's no other answer besides Him. Guess what? What an opportunity we are sitting with in the nations. Watch the harvest that's going to come in. It's busy happening now. Watch. It's busy happening now. There's people turning to God like never before. Because do you think the politicians have answers? Alright, so fear will always attract whatever information that is needed to legitimize the existence. So if you're fearing something, you will get be guaranteed to receive that information to legitimize your fear. The telephone, why aren't you paid? The letter, why aren't you paid? The landlords, the, the zero bank account, negative, the credit, the, the debt collectors, the, whatever it might be, there's no food, there's no... Whatever you fear, the devil will reinforce with to say, ha, I told you so. Who's experienced that? You experience that? It's almost like this happens and the next thing happens and, well, you know, you have this diagnosis. There's this some sickness, whatever. Remember, you acknowledge the facts, but you deny the influence they are in your life. Don't put your head in the sand. Go, yeah, okay, this is the thing, Lord, I don't know how, but you're going to give a break to you. You're going to do something here. So this is important because the, the church has been shaken. I mean, you know, things like this. But what do you trust in? What do you believe? What do you believe? Alright, strongholds are places of trust in us or in others. Okay, this is strongholds. We trust in these things or we trust in those things. So, when you have a personal victory in an area of your life, it might be in prayer. Um, what happens, we have a voice to release uh, uh, the counter of that lie. So, when you experience something that's happening and you, you're battling and stuff and you get the breakthrough, Suddenly there's a victory, there's an authority that you start to see in your life of, no, 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 this finances, I don't know how it's working, but it's, God is faithful in the past, He's faithful in the present, and He's faithful in the future. Something's going to work out. Yeah, we hear testimonies that we heard today as well, about some of the business things and that, that, you know, there, you know, as church we take hold, we pray on, on in the week, and then put a breakthrough with the business stuff, with even other people, I don't know if they believe in the business deal or whatever, and boom, it works out. The thing is, I say again, God doesn't live, he, 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 you know, we think things are impossible, but He lives in possibility, He's, He makes all things possible. We only know things as impossible, but for God all things are possible. Who is your Father? Who do you believe? If your earthly Father knows how to give good gifts, how much more your heavenly Father is in heaven? We have a perfect Father in heaven, guys. Some of us have such screwed up images of our heavenly Father because we've never known our earthly Father or we've had such a bad experience of our earthly Father that we cannot actually believe our heavenly Father. He sent His only Son for you and me. A perfect Father. Perfect in all His ways. Wow. He's perfect in all his ways. Alright? Sometimes it's in prayer. Sometimes it's in praise. You know praise is a weapon? Praise is not what you feel like. It's, it's a weapon. It's what you start speaking and doing. Praise and worship until the spirit of worship comes. Some of us, we wait for this. 
That's why many times we've trained in churches, and I thank God it's 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 not like that yet, but it's we 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 wait for some oh man, we train you as individuals to encounter the living God so that the spirit of worship is there. Don't wait for it because the spirit of worship wherever you go is there. It's not what you see, it's who he is. And it's your response to him in all your places that you go to. Alright, so we exalt Jesus as a weapon of war if there is for instance, a health issue. We exalt Jesus as the weapon. Alright? So, when I deal with uh, the battle in my mind, what do I do? I position myself to influence things around me when I'm busy going through things like that. Here's a scripture, a great scripture in the book of Nahum. Uh, the book of Nahum, uh, ch uh, chapter 1, verse 7. Um, listen to this. Yeah. In Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The Lord is good, capital letter, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. So here we have the positive of what a stronghold is. That just like the enemy can have a stronghold in our thinking pattern, God says, I'm your stronghold. Alright? The Lord is good. Not bad, not a little bit bad. He's good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. Alright, so the stronghold this time, like I said, is the re revelation of what God's goodness, that God is good. The goodness of God. That's the, that's the stronghold. If I have the stronghold in my thinking, God is good. Oh, this bad thing happened to me. Wow, God is good. Wow, that person died. God is good. Suddenly when I have a stronghold in, in, inside me, what happens? I have a stability. And I have the fruit of what I believe in my life. The name of the Lord is a hiding place of strength. There's a strength that I can find in God. It's a hiding place you're not having him. Alright? So, people who know the goodness of God, um, we actually then have this hiding place and this stronghold in which we can actually dwell. I used to think that God was not always so good. Do you know why? Because when I grew up in that, most of the times, uh, I had a very, how can I say, grown up, unhappy wife. Because of things that happened to me. I said to you the first time that I, I wanted to take my own life. I was in um, grade two with a loaded weapon against my head. You see, the devil's plan is to destroy you. God's plan is to prosper you. And there was, for many reasons, you know, things just didn't work out, that didn't work out, that didn't work out. And I couldn't understand, well, I don't understand this. You know, and I grew up in that, and then this happens, and that happens, and, you know, from friendships to that goes wrong, that person lies, this, 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 this. And I, 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 my expectancy, when something went good, is that, watch, something's going to go wrong now. That's called the spirit of abode. That's a demonic spirit. Do you know that? It's a spirit that comes and lives because you, it's a familiar spirit that comes and dwells with you because you believe the lie. So you don't have expectancy for things to turn for the better. You don't have expectancy to go, I was expecting, oh, well, this is going so well, you know, ah, this is too good now and something's going to go wrong. Until there's a time in my life where I've got a breakthrough to know that God is only good. He's only good. There's no darkness. There's no shadowing. He's only good. He's perfect. When I realized that, I realized I believed the lie because you see, there was a stronghold. The enemy had influence because I had bad experiences. And our bad experiences, many times as Christians, forms our theology. And that's why we have theology that stinks. It doesn't match what the Word says. 
And we don't live in victory, we live in survival. Yet God is good. Alright, so... God is good. Um, this is the stronghold we can have in Him. And it's evidenced by what we trust in when trouble arises. So when trouble arises, what do you trust in? That's when it becomes evident. That's why, if you look at what's happened the last six, seven months of Corona time, what have you trusted in? Because that's what will become evident. Alright? So, uh, a thought life has only been changed when I see a redemptive purpose of Jesus in that situation. When I see God's going God's to do something here. When that's a revelation to me that God's going to do something in this crazy situation, that's when the breakthrough. That's when I've received revelation that He has a redemptive plan. That's when that stronghold returns. Are you with me? So, my approach to a problem often uh, will show, show me whether I actually have a stronghold or not. The way you approach a problem shows whether you have a stronghold. God wants us, He wants us to address the impossibility in the season of our lives. He wants us to address the impossible situations because God has a plan. How's it going to work out? I don't know. I mean, honestly, guys, like I said, I don't want to depress you and tell you <laughs> some of the things you've been through. But God has a plan. And it's like, how's this possible? He God opens it. He makes a way where there seems to be no way because He's the way maker. So, where have we fallen for a lie in our lives? Where is there a lie that we actually believe in our lives? You see, the Lord has been training us for something we are unaware of uh, in the season. He's been training us as the church on earth. We've gone through, I mean the earth has gone through traumatic things. We, the whole earth. But He's been training us. For something in the season. Beauty for ashes. That's what he told us at the beginning of the year. The peace of God is the absolute, uh, the complete absence of chaos. So when we receive the peace of God, it's, it's the absence of chaos. That's where the peace of God I have the peace of God. There might be chaos on the outside, but it's not inside. All right. So we have been exposed to so much in this time, so much in this season, um, and all these things busy happening. So the pain we are busy feeling and busy going through in this season is to take us to Him. Don't let your pain be wasted, guys. One thing about pain is that you know you're still alive. I'm telling you, you know, you, you know, all of us that, that go jogging and exercising like George and me and Alphonse, jokes. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you go for a jog or, you know, exercise like the next day, oh, <laughs> we feel the pain, but guess what? You feel alive. Alright? Alright, so the pain or feeling in this season is to take us to Him. To take us closer to God. The pain you're busy going through at the moment, whatever you're going through in your life, is actually to take us to Him. Okay? So if the pain uh, you're going through does not take you to Him, you're actually losing your sensitivity. Let's jump back to 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 6. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting out arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Bringing every thought into captivity. Alright? So, um, I actually experienced this in a total... I'll just give you a bit of a... Not a parable, but it's something like a parable. So, 
what it actually means in the practical when taking, it actually means bringing every thought captive. So, uh, in, in, in my past, that many, many years ago in the military, I said I was part of a unit, a special forces unit in the military, and we spent uh, most of my time in the old Southwest Africa uh, area or Namibia in the wartime. And what happened was, um, uh, my commando that I was in consisted mainly of ex terrorists. And this is what it means. Taking every thought captive is to take the terrorist, this guy that was there trying to kill me and those around me, to take them captive and they are so turned around that they actually became the closest ally in the people fighting with me. Did you hear what I just told you? This is real. We had more ex-terrorists in our commander than there were they won't. So this is taking a captive, your, these wrong things captive, and God, because God works all things to those that love Him, He turns all these things around to work for us. And we think, no, the enemy is, like, how strong it is. Well, God, open, open my servant's eyes that he may see. And those are for us more than those are against us, guys. We've got to start seeing what God sees because God is not stressed on earth at the moment. I promise you that. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen? The earth is getting lost. No, please. He knows the end from the beginning. We all see it. So, what it means is it's taken this enemy soldier captive and he becomes a soldier for us. Okay? So, it's seen that thought process so transformed that it now works for us. That, that negative thought thinking that it's so turned around it's like you know for me it's like well, you know yes this thing happens whatever but God's got something good in store he's a good father he's the perfect father I'm not expecting bad I'm expecting good I started having a redemptive purpose in that area of my life it's taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ what is that? The mind of Christ. Okay? So taking this deceptive thought about a bad situation until what it actually does is reflects the mind of Christ about the situation. It's like sickness. Well, you know this, you know, Lazarus is dead. He's not, oh, okay, thanks for telling me. I feel bad about that. But I'll be two days later coming back. Jesus, two days. So he was thinking good. In those temperatures. And he still felt for Mary Martha. Lazarus who had died. And he still cried with her because he felt the, the pain. And he says, no, no, let me show you. Arise, Lazarus, come up. Because nothing's impossible with me. Impossible situations become possible situations with God. And when we start thinking like that, things turn. You know, we, uh, guys, I don't know how we have to figure it out, but it, God turns it around. Take your thoughts captive until you see the redemptive situation He has. He will turn situations in my life to work for His glory. You see, active faith offends inactive faith. Active faith offends inactive faith. Faith in action offends faith as a concept. Faith in action offends faith as a concept. A lot of Christians know Christianity as a concept, not as a way of life. We speak about the sick people, but we don't see them always healed. You see, that's when we have a concept, but not a belief system. Revival culture is the culture which we walk in because we've been renewed in our thinking. And we see the miracles and healings as we do in this house. So take the vile thoughts and that there is no solution and cast it at the feet of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is our provider. You see, God wants to do a work in us to do a work through us. God is doing a work in you and me so He can do it through us. How will the world know who Jesus is unless they see him in you and me? 
How will they know His love unless they experience it through you and me? How will they see that the God of wonder, the God of glory, the God of miracles are necessary in you and me? That's why we owe, owe the world an encounter. People who believe the lie that they cannot have a financial breakthrough, we cast that thought down. We cast it down. You buy, whatever you buy here is what is bound there. Whatever you buy here is what is bound there. Whatever you lose here is what is really loose there. A lot of people bind and loose, but I mean, we don't even know what is bound there or loose there. Because whatever is bound and loose there is what we can release it. So, if it's not in the mind of Christ, stop releasing it. What's the mind of Christ? God, God has a redemptive purpose for something. Hallelujah. I want to just crash the end there. So. But I really believe this is also this time where God is really also to challenge us to change the way of thinking. Because a lot of us have emotional battles is because we have wrong belief systems. And wrong, wrong belief systems um, bring about wrong behavior patterns. No, but he's always grumpy. Or he's not friendly. Or she's like this and that. Change what you, how you think. Because how you think is what you believe and how you behave. And if we have trust in a lot of other things, then we reinforce strongholds that aren't always God. But if it's the stronghold is God, then the breakthroughs are there. So a lot of Christians wonder, where's my breakthrough? Well, what do you believe? What do you trust in? And that's why I'm amazed and so thankful to the Lord in that about the testimonies of of the things that we, um, what people are experiencing uh, in this lockdown, just major provision, major breakthroughs, um, healings, miracles, things like that. Um, and, and I'm just thankful to God for that. And I want to encourage you, those who are also listening, that, that God wants us to be able to trust Him, that He becomes our stronghold. Because He's only good. And that in every negative situation, there's a redemptive purpose that God has. So, this morning, if you get hope for it, whether it's a sickness or this prognosis or that financial state, whatever, God is good. Yeah. Let that be your stronghold. Amen. Amen. All right, let's just stand on and pray for you. So, Father, I just want to pray for everyone just listening and those watching online. And Father, I want to pray for. Just faith to arise. I'm going to pray. Just even in that vision that I saw of those, those straps being fastened. That God is anchoring us. Anchoring us in a new fresh way. Even this morning that there's new stability and strength coming. Because He's the one that's anchoring us. Because we're anchored. Our trust is anchored in Him. Lord, You are the stronghold. You are our stronghold. Lord, we just want to confess it. Because we choose to believe it. And I want to pray, Lord, that even from this day forth, that there will be a shift in the way we think. And that wrong thinking patterns and strongholds will come tumbling down. Because you are the solution. And we pray, Father, for everyone. That they experience just a release and a breakthrough in this area of their lives. That we can trust in you. For you are a good Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good. God bless you.